So the first thing we need to do is actually draw Z9 octadec enoic yeah. acid. Mm -hmm. We can't know how to make it until we've drawn it. So octadec means 18. That's right. Okay. Oct means 8 and dec means 10. So that would give us 18 overall. So do you remember, does Z mean that the two substituents should be basically cis or trans to each other? Cis. Remember that we were saying that the mnemonic could be Z stands for zane side and E stands for epposite sides. So <laughs> Z means the two substituents are on the zane side of the double bond, and E means they're on epposite sides. Oh, it's probably from Latin, huh? No, it's, it's German. 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 Oh, it's German. I always think everything's German. I was trying to pronounce those last night. It's like Zuzamen, and right. that's pretty good. Really? Are you German? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then E something. Entity. Oh, that's the one I was having trouble with. <laughs> so there must be easy for you to remember. <laughs> that's the one thing in OCHEM I can remember. <laughs> yes. So basically, we need to turn a triple bond into a cis double bond. So this is a matter of memorization. We need to look at the reagents and remember which of those turns a triple bond into a cis double bond. We're going the other direction now. That's true. This is the so opposite direction from the previous case. Bond. Is, is one of those acids into a cis double bond? Hydrogen, yeah. How do we so get double bond now? Well, that's what octadecenoic acid means, right? The ene tells you it's a double bond. Oh, here's the PD, maybe H. Octet, we have, sorry, what? Oh, so when you say octadecinoic, that means it's triple. And when it says decanoic, it's Yeah, it's easy to miss those two letters. Yeah, okay. But the original name had a Y-N, which was indicating the triple bond, oh, okay. I-N. And the new name has an E-N, E, okay. which indicates a double bond. If they had said octadecanoic acid, then there would be no pi bonds at all. Oh, okay. So the first thing is they're testing whether we know how to interpret the nomenclature there. <laughs> so this is what they were um, going for. Well, we can see that um, one thing we're doing is putting in two new hydrogens, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're putting them in cis to each other. So we simply have to have memorized which of these reagents puts two hydrogens in cis um, when attacking a triple bond. Does anyone know? Oh, yeah. the hydrogen with the metal. What's a metal? Yeah, the Lindlar. Yeah, this is the Lindlar catalyst. which is H. This is the only thing you guys have learned to do with a Lindlar catalyst. Yeah. Okay. It attacks triple bonds and turns them into cis double bonds. <laughs> so that's going to be the second step. Oh, that's the whole step. That's it. It attacks triple bonds and turns them into cis double bonds. This is one step? That's right. Oh, God, it seems so complicated. Yeah. No wonder you said we could do it in three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so while we're at it, suppose that you were trying to turn it into a trans double bond. I don't think they gave you the way to do that here, but they did. Um, no, they did. Yeah. Which of these would give us the trans double bond? The Now, that would actually... Um, that would actually attack the double bond so many times it would just turn it into a single bond. Oh, yeah, because the Lindner catalyst is what stops it, or makes it only go once, right? Oh. Yes. Oh. But if you only have two moles of hydrogen, then you can only do it once. So two moles of hydrogen to the nickel. You want one, you want if you only want to do one. Yeah. Well, you got two hydrogen, so one of each, right? One mole of each. Oh, okay. If we just attack with hydrogen, some of them will over-hydrogenate and turn all the way into single bonds. 
Um, you'll get more of this if you use the two moles, which is in G. But even if you use F, some of them will overhydrogenate. Um, so we don't want to use either F or G because then we'll get at least some um, hydrogenation all the way to a single bond. Because we know that double bonds can get hydrogenated too, right? Um, so one good thing the Linlar's catalyst does is it gives us only one hydrogenation. And the other good thing it does is it gives us the right stereochemistry. It gives us to its cis and not trans. Um, so this would give us uh, one cis hydrogenation. Uh, just a normal hydrogenation would tend to give us two hydrogenations. And it doesn't really matter whether they're cis or trans, although I guess they wouldn't be cis. Two cis hydrogenation, but that usually doesn't matter. The key things they're giving you two hydrogenations. Um, you'll get, uh, you really will get two if you have two moles, but even with just one mole, sometimes they'll get the two hydrogenations. So there is a way to get one hydrogenation that's trans. Here. This is just a matter of memorization. It turns out to be B. Okay. This is sodium metal in liquid ammonia. Okay. Hmm. That has a uh, pretty interesting mechanism, but we won't have time to talk about that. And you probably wouldn't be tested on it. Yeah. So we won't um, go through the mechanism for why this is trans. Um, we'll just memorize it. Although, um, we should know why the other hydrogenations are cis. Why are normal hydrogenations with a metal catalyst cis? Because they're both on it. Yeah, the same both the hydrogens are coming in from the same speck of metal, so they should come in from the same side. Notice that even the Lindlar catalyst really is using a metal. It's using the palladium. palladium. So we're still going to have it attached to a speck of metal. So it should be easy to understand why normal hydrogenations are cis. Okay. This does not use a metal catalyst, so okay. it wouldn't um, go through the same thing. It turns out that because this is sequential, um, uh, it's going to turn out to give us a trans. But we'll just memorize that this is the way to get a trans. Now again, these two would only be used for alkynes, not for alkenes. This you could use for an alkene as well. Um, but these would just be used for alkynes. So as someone was pointing out, a second ago we learned the main way to make alkynes, which is to do a double elimination no, with um, sodium amide, NH2. Uh, and now we've learned some things that you can do with alkynes. Well, you can hydrogenate them once, either cis or trans, or you can hydrogenate them twice. So these are all things that are likely to be tested on the exam. So notice it didn't really make much difference that this was a huge molecule and didn't make much difference yeah. that we had a carboxylic acid over here. We just had to focus on what was happening to the triple bond. Mm -hmm. The rest of this was just to intimidate us. <laughs> okay. Well, I was uh, predicting at the start that um, I often find that students' main trouble with synthesis problems was not knowing the reactions. Uh, I would say, though, that a lot of the reactions you guys did know. Uh, I think you can see that you got some gaps, though, as well. So um, there's some bad news and there's some good news. You have learned a lot of the reactions, um, but um, a lot of them you could know better, or there's some that you hadn't learned yet. So we tried to fill in some of those gaps here. So like I said, before you do more problems, I would just try to make that piece of paper that lists the reactions you need to know, and just keep drilling on what are these reactions that I need to know. And we did go over, we did go over some tricks and techniques for um, synthesis problems. They might have seemed like trivial techniques, but they can make a big difference, like putting in numbers just to make sure you know exactly which carbons are reacting, and then trying to specify exactly what is happening. So don't just say, I'm adding a bromine. Say, the bromine is adding to carbon four, which is losing a hydrogen, or whatever it is. Try to be as specific as possible. Try to put in squiggles to show the bond that's forming or the bond that's breaking. We talked about how you can move from either direction. Try to ask, what should I do to the starting material? But also ask, do I know a way to make a product? In many cases, that's the best, because in many cases, there's only one way to make the functional group. We saw earlier, there's really only one way you learn to make alkynes out of non-alkynes, double elimination. There's um, only two ways to make aldehydes and ketones, ozonolysis or PCC. There's only one way to cleave carbon-carbon bonds, which is uh, ozonolysis. So in many cases, you can just look at the product and say there's only one way to do this. But remember, you have to ask, um, when you put in a reagent, you have to ask, what functional group does this act on? You can't assume the reagent will work unless it's acting on the right functional group. For example, you can't do an E2 until you have a good leaving group. Um, you can't use PCC until you have an alcohol. Okay. 
So you have to know what functional group did this act on. Don't think that all reactions are alkene reactions. Remember, you learned a bunch of different reactions in the course. We also saw that if you're um, trying to attack something with no functional groups, you're likely using a radical halogenation, especially if the molecule has no functional groups at all. Radical halogenation um, is pretty much the only thing you know how to do. Okay. Well, um, one other thing I would do before I do any practice is just redo the problems we just did. Just redo the problems we just did. Hopefully these will be easy. But if they're not easy yet, what's the point of doing new problems? And just doing these problems is, is a good review of a lot of the key reactions in the course. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot HTM. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.